Um, I'd like to get your thoughts publicly about, um, and I should have had all the information in front of me, um, but this relates to the physician who has made allegations about uh, women who have had botched abortions weekly on a, on a weekly basis uh, going to hospitals when in fact that has been pretty much uh, found to be untrue. Uh, is that what you're relying on? I'm not sure I follow your question. Relying on in terms of trying to go out and claiming that uh, clinics are not safe. Are you relying on that individual's uh, testimony? And, and I'm curious too, if, if you had a lawyer go out and make claims that were not um, to be verified, what should the penalty be from a professional standpoint? Well, I, one thing that we won't do is I'm not going to speculate on the basis of reports that have been in the media uh, because um, sometimes they may be inaccurate. But I will say this, uh, Senator, uh, we have been engaging in a broad review of the status of abortion laws and regulations in the state of West Virginia, uh, and we have not completed our review. So I think it'd be premature to talk about any specific issues that might be associated with it. Uh, but we had invited comments across the board and we welcome input from anyone across the political spectrum because I think that's the right thing to do. Wherever you are on the issue, uh, we would welcome your input because we want to make sure that we have a clear understanding of the laws and regulations uh, governing abortion. Well, but you've actually utilized that gentleman's information uh, to pursue what, whatever your goal may be. Have you actually done the flip side and actually contacted hospitals and said, hey, what are your numbers actually? Because my understanding is the numbers coming out of hospitals certainly do not reflect what this gentleman uh, is claiming. So our review was meant to be uh, broad in nature and we uh, made it very clear we wanted input from everyone. We did reach out to hospitals. We did reach out to a lot of the state boards. We were trying to collect as much information as possible in order to really separate uh, myth from fact. And even to this day, we would meet with anyone on the issue who has value to add. I'm not afraid of meeting with anyone uh, regardless of their political perspective because this is meant to be a legal review. We're trying to do things the right way. And I don't see where there was a medical issue out there, frankly, in terms of all these unsafe uh, procedures. Um, when in fact abortion is considered one of the safest procedures. And I'm kind of curious why you even bother to go out there in the first place to do this. Well, and, and at the same time, so that's one question, sure. why even do it? And then secondly, uh, I haven't seen the same emphasis placed on uh, pregnancy crisis centers. So senators, you will know uh, the state of uh, the law in West Virginia had not been discussed much uh, prior to last year uh, with respect to abortion. And through our review, we've already learned some very important things. Currently, West Virginia law permit, permit, permits abortions to be performed up until birth. That's not a, a myth, that's a fact. I don't think many people realize that. And, and especially how many, how many have when you place? have um, individuals that may uh, perform an abortion up to birth, I think that raises some of the potential safety concerns because if you can perform an abortion up until two min minutes before delivery, which you are allowed to under the law, that doesn't mean that every single clinic or entity is doing it, but if you're allowed to do it under the law, that raises questions related to oversight. So specifically in the state of West Virginia, how many of those abortions have taken place? Uh, as I said, we're in the process of going through our review, and uh, we may not have access to all of that information because it may depend upon the uh, level of reporting that's going back up to the state. And so what we're doing is we're trying to collect all the information that's available, that's coming into the state, and then, of course, we want to be transparent about that and uh, provide that information to the public. Because, you know, when you say <coughs> that you can take it all the way, you can have an abortion all the way up to two minutes before birth. Right. You can make that statement, but I'd like to see the facts of where that's actually taking place. Well, I'm actually focusing on the law, which is my job. The reality is that the law permits abortion to be performed up until birth. There's no argument about that. I think you, know, you can have arguments with respect to how many are occurring. You could have arguments with respect to what the uh, clinics and the hospitals are doing in practice, and I think that's a fair point. But the question of whether the law permits it to birth is not subject to debate. But see, you, you, to me, you utilize that specific aspect to generate the type of media coverage that you would like to have. And in fact, if the law says that, and we don't have numbers to even 
substantiate that it's taking place, don't you see how you, you could be misleading the public? Oh, I, I think I've been very clear with the public that uh, there were people that were debating the law. And it's important to educate people that if abortion is permitted up until birth, that's something that the West Virginia public deserves to know. And I think it's critical to always learn all of the facts, and that's part of the reason why we engaged in a review, because I don't think the public wants to uh, be dealing with uh, myths. They want to know exactly what's happened. So when will we have these transparent facts? Well, we're, we're happy to share this information. We've been working on this over the last few months. Obviously, we're also spending a lot of time right now working on the water crisis. So uh, as we finalize our material, we'd be happy to share that with you. I can't put a specific timeline on it now, but uh, obviously as this continues to go, we engage in our review, we're going to be willing to share information with you. What is your attitude when it comes to um, government regulation, just as a general? So I, I think we're diverting from a budget hearing, but I'm happy to answer, sir. No, we're not, because you, you just brought up the fact of the water crisis. Sure. Um. So I, I think that, one, the most important thing I always want to emphasize to people here is that I am the chief legal officer of the state, and I have an obligation to enforce laws whether I like them or not. So, for example, if someone were to come to me and ask whether we would enforce a particular law, I'm always going to say yes. If the law was duly enacted and it's constitutional, we're going to enforce it, regardless of my own personal position on the issue. That's my role in this process. So the legislature ultimately gets to make the decision as to how some of these laws and regulations are changed. We're going to make sure we enforce all of the laws vigorously, whether I agree with them or not. 